man. Thank God for you joining us again for YPWW. We pray that God has been good to you all week long. And let's begin with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for being an awesome God. And God, as we go forth into this new quarter, we ask that you reveal your word to us. God, give us a mind to apply this lesson to our lives. We give you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We thank God. We're day late, but we stand here by the grace of God. Amen. We pray for all of those who may be traveling, coming back from the Women's Convention, International Convention, praying for all of you. Uh, I enjoyed it from home this year, but I thank God that, you know, God moved and showed himself strong. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, every night that I got a chance to watch and Sunshine Band and Purity. Thank God for that. Uh, our president, President Green, thank God for him. Uh, thank God for all of the saints of God. I just enjoyed this women's convention, even though I wasn't physically there. Amen. I ask that you would pray with us. Amen. As we get ready to go forth into our vacation Bible school here at Bethel Church of God in Christ this week, it'll be the uh, 6th, 7th, and the 8th. Amen. I think we put the announcement on the beginning of this video. But we won't be before you long because our first lesson in this quarter is know that it's inevitable. And our lesson text is Psalm 107, 23 through 30. And our memory verse is Psalm 107 and 29. And I'll read that for the brief summary of this lesson. The word of the Lord says, He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. Amen. And the word of God is blessed. And so this quarter is basically going to be dealing with the storms of life. Amen. And we know, you know, our Savior, Jesus Christ, told us in this world, we're going to have tribulations. We're going to be we're going to have trials. Storms going to come. But we can be of good cheer because he overcame the world. And so when it comes to the storm of life, you know, age don't matter. No matter how old you are, uh, stay, storms are going to come. And the word inevitable, you know, that's something that's unavoidable or it's bound to happen. And so when we think about stormy seas, and that's basically what one of the Psalm 107, this section, because Psalm 107, it kind of focuses on two or three, uh, maybe even four different people that God rescues. And through 23 through 30, we're talking about those who are in a storm, you know, those who are being tossed to and fro by a storm. And we know that any ship can sail on a calm sea, you know, but we know that the seas of life aren't always calm. And those, when we find ourselves in a storm, nine times out of 10, well, there ain't no nine times out of 10, every time the power of God is revealed. But the power of God is revealed when we come to the end of our own strength, when we come to the end of ourselves. And if you read verse 27 and 28 in this psalm, it tells you they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits end. When they get to their wits end, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses. So, you know, storms may be inevitable, but God has a purpose in every storm, every shipwreck, every tragedy or whatever comes our way. And so for this lesson, it's an encouragement that, yeah, storms are inevitable, but our God remains the same because we got to remember that whatever God allowed to come our way, it's not to kill us but to draw us closer to him so he can bless us, so he can strengthen our faith. And there's a purpose for everything that happens in our lives. And we must remember Romans 8 and 28. We can't just quote that. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. So everything that God allowed to come our way, you know, it's a purpose. It may be to help us grow. It may be to help somebody else. But the main thing is that God to be glorified. And he didn't say in that scripture that all things are good. He said that they will work for good. And so when God allows a time of trial or storm to come in our life, you know, it's always for our good and for him to get the glory. And he never said that we had to like it. And that's where we get hung up at now. We're not going to like everything God wants us to do or he allows to come into our lives. But if we look past the circumstance, if we look past the storm, then we realize that we have a reason to still be thankful. 
this psalm, actually Psalm 107, it starts off with, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endure forever. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom have he have redeemed from the hand of the enemy. So you got to ask yourself, yeah, I'm in a storm right now. I'm, I'm facing the storms of life. But am I a, a thankful person or am I always complaining? You know, again, although tough times may be inevitable, this psalm reminds us that since God is our savior, we always have something to be thankful for. Because my flesh, I always want to complain. But the Holy Ghost reminds me that if God can uh, cause the storm to come, then he can also cause the storm to go. He can speak peace be still. He created us, which means he can heal us. He can provide for us. He can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. He is Alpha. He is Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the Prince of Peace. So we should praise God for his power because he can settle any seat. And just because I say that, he can settle in his seat, but that don't mean he will. Sometimes he'll let the winds blow. Sometimes he'll let the waves go wild. Sometimes he'll let you get beat up by the storm. But he's always there with you. Our job is to seek him and to seek his purpose. Why am I in this storm? What do you want me to learn from you? How do you want me to experience you? But so most of the time, he'll condition us and change us in the midst of the storm because he has a reason for each storm that we face. You know, so we have to realize in verse 30 in this psalm, it says that he bringeth them unto their desired haven. And a haven, that's a place of safety, a place of refuge. And we know the safest place in the whole wide world is in Jesus Christ. And he wants us to, he want to take us to our final haven, which is going to be heaven. So he'll allow storms to come, you know, to sometimes keep us in check, to make us stay humble, which our lesson illustration talks about in our book when it talks about Jonah. He ended up in the midst of a storm because of his own disobedience. God was calling him to go to Nineveh, but instead he went to Tarshish. So God sent the storm to get Jonah to repent or to change his mind or and his direction. And so that illustration, it shows us how we do. You know, when, when we want to do what we want to do, it starts off okay. It starts off okay, going smooth like we want it, but it ends up bad. Because when Jonah hit the road, everything was good. He was able to pay the fare, board the ship. He even laid down for a little rest. And he thinking he's going to have a smooth ride. He had it all planned out. And then the inevitable happens. It's inevitable that storm's going to come when we disobey God. So whenever we operate outside the will of God or in disobedience, we'll find ourselves in a downward spiral and nothing worked like Jonah planned it. So we have to trust God. The Bible says the way of a transgression is hard. And if we, God has been calling us to do certain things, sometimes we bring the storms on ourselves. And that's another part of this lesson, you know, that it brings out. And so we have to make sure we're in the right relationship with God. Make sure we in the will of God. Make sure we walk in there in obedience. If not, then we need to repent. And when you get right with God, he'll preserve you in the midst of the storm. And so we know the storms of life is coming. We know that we don't have to face some trials. We don't have to face some tribulations. But yet we have a God who knows all, who sees all, who's in control of everything. And so we can trust him to bring us and pull us through the storm that we are going through. Amen. So we thank God for this lesson on the night again. It's, it's a bunch in this lesson. It's kind of two different viewpoints of this lesson so it's a lot to bring out so you're gonna have a good time studying it and let's end with a word of prayer first i'm gonna give you a question out the book let's give you question number three we just got through talking about this certain storms are a result of disobedience can these particular storms be avoided if so how Amen. So let's end with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this quarter. Oh, God, encouraging us, teaching us how to navigate through the storms of life and how we can trust you, how we need to be right with you. And we ask, God, that you forgive us, God, for anything that we said, done, or thought that don't give you glory, for we do want to be right with you. Oh, God, we pray for it, that you save the sinner, reclaim the backslider, God, and strengthen the saints everywhere. God, we pray and we ask that you help us apply these lessons to our lives as we go and 
navigate through this next quarter. Oh God, if someone may have an unspoken prayer request, don't know what to pray for, don't know how to pray, we ask that you help them and meet that need. And God, all of those who may be traveling from the Women's International Convention, again, we pray that you protect them. Oh God, as they are on the highways, on the railways, on the on the airways, God, we ask that you protect them and bring them back home safely to their parents and to their loved ones and to their families. Oh, God, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. We are the Bethel Church of God in Christ, Plain Theater, Louisiana. Thank God for our pastor, Pastor Donald Douglas. Amen. Thank God for Lady Douglas to my wife. Amen. I'm Elder Marcus Green. Amen. And thank God for all of the saints of God, all of the people of God. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel. And we pray that these services and these lessons are blessing you as much as they bless us. Again, Next week, we may or may not have a, a YPWW lesson because we will be in vacation Bible school. Amen. So we pray and we ask that you pray for us as we go forth, you know, for all ages. I was going to say for the young people, but it's for all ages. And so we pray that you pray with us as we go forth in vacation Bible school, that souls be saved, you know, and lives be changed in Jesus' name. Amen. So we may not have a lesson next week, but we'll see you next time. If it be the Lord's will, God bless you, God keep you.